My overriding vision is to use the arts to empower, enlighten, and educate. And I use that theme for the mission for the foundation. And my career has always been around using the arts. A teacher at heart, Karen Alexander taught first grade for six years. Then she moved to the corporate world of sales at Xerox. In 2001, she reached a turning point. I was approaching my 40th birthday and started asking God for what is my purpose? What should I be doing? And literally left my corporate job, stepped out on faith. And Auntie Karen wasn't in existence. It wasn't even on my radar. And it evolved from just stepping out on faith. Stepping out on faith meant mortgaging her house and drawing down her savings to pursue her dream. Her personal investment launched the Auntie Karen Foundation. And where did the name Auntie Karen come from? We called our aunts in my family Auntie. And I was visiting my cousin in California back in 1985. And his daughter Trina was with me and he didn't want her just calling me Karen. So he coined Auntie Karen and that's where it started. And that was the start of the Columbia-based foundation, in operation now for more than 18 years. The Auntie Karen Foundation hosts a concert series and an educational program for schools with colorful characters. But a program that encourages entrepreneurship gives Karen Alexander the most inspiration. We have a, a, an event we do every year with our young entrepreneurs. And just seeing these young, vibrant, kids excited about life and creative and the ideas and just seeing them get what we're trying to do with the foundation gives me inspiration. And we showcase kids from seven to 22 with their own businesses. My youngest was four and she's eight and still has her company. And then we have our television show. We partnered up with ETV starting in 2006 and in 2008, we created videos using my cartoon characters. I have 15 original cartoon characters. This is Gordon. <laughs> Gordon, hello. Gordon, Gordon is an overweight purple Jamaican yam. Um, he's joined by Olivia the Octopus and several other characters. And we have a show on knowitall.org called Auntie Karen's Place. And then our biggest program is our Legends of Concert series. And that's where we bring in Grammy Award winning music legends once a year to celebrate black history. We've had people such as Gladys Knight, Shaka Khan, Al Jarreau, and it because that's our big fundraiser. Because I'm a teacher at heart, I require the artists to do a master class. And so the master class takes place. It started out at USC, but when we brought Gladys Knight, it expanded to uh, Richland School District One Auditorium. So we bring about 600 kids from across the state together, and then they learn about whoever the artist is, and then the artist spends an intimate session with them the day before the concert. In 2018, we brought Sheila E and the Keenan High School band played Sheila E's music and she invited them to open up for her at the concert. What is your biggest workplace challenge? It's always around finances. I'm trying to um, navigate between taking care of people that we've hired because we work with independent contractors and waiting for funds that we've earned to come in so that they never seem to merge at the same time. So my biggest challenge has always been around how do I take care of the needs that we have while waiting for the funds that we've earned. And you're relying as a nonprofit on support donations, from grants, donations. Donations, um, we also do a lot of fee-based services. And so, for example, if somebody sponsors us, but we have to pay for something in advance, then we have to find the money to pay for it in advance before the, the funds come in. So that's always a big challenge, which ca cash flow would be my biggest challenge. What would your advice for young women be today? My overall advice would be to see yourself doing whatever it is that, that you decide that you want to do. Uh, I have what I call my faith principles. And the first one is find a purpose or a goal. A is ask for help. I is invest in your mind, T is take time to plan and think big, and H is help others. So I always see the end result first and then figure out how do I get from here, where I am, to the end result. Find somebody who's doing what you want to do, and even if you can't see them in person, they probably have a video or a book or some talk, and use them as a guide or a model because success leaves clues, and if somebody has done it before, there's a good chance that they have already gone through the hard knocks. Like, I wish I would have had somebody that had done what I'm doing. This was kind of like on the job training. So I would definitely look at 
you know, somebody that's, done, that's doing or has done what you want to do and model them. And what advice do you have for someone who is interested in doing what you're doing today? The biggest advice is I stepped out on faith and um, at the time I felt that that's what I needed to do for myself, but I literally spent all my savings, all my investment, mortgage my house, et cetera, to keep this going. My biggest advice is keep your day job, use it to fund your dream. And as you're figuring out what it is that you wanna do, you have a cushion. So you don't have to worry about, well, how am I gonna keep the lights on and bring this dream to life? So my biggest um, advice would be don't quit your day job. What is your hope for South Carolina? South Carolina has a hidden talent of artists. My hope is that we would acknowledge and appreciate the artists that are here now, instead of acknowledging them once they make it big someplace else. I think what I would love to see is more emphasis placed on investing in our intellectual property that's already here. This series is about women and some of the attributes are leadership and creativity and public service. How would you define those for a successful woman? My team is majority women. And what we do is we make the impossible possible. You have to, as the leader, have the vision and set the vision. And whether you see it coming or not, you have to relay that to your team that we're gonna make this happen because they rely on you, they look for you for the mode or the tone of what's gonna happen. And once I do that, then they're like, oh yeah, we can do it. So I think I would say that you have to constantly see yourself as being where you wanna be.